What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, and today we're checking out the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus. We're gonna compare them side by side in this video and take a look at all three colors, silver, gold, and space gray. Now these are available in two capacities, 64 and 256 gigs, starting off at 699 for the iPhone 8 and 799 for the 8 Plus. The big new features for the iPhone 8 include wireless charging for the first time. We also get fast charging over the USB port if you buy a separate accessory. We also get the A11 six core CPU, which is powering the new and improved cameras along the back. And if you have the iPhone 8 Plus, you get some new features thanks to the dual camera setup. We also get louder speakers, Bluetooth 5.0, and True Tone technology on the display. So getting into these boxes, let's start with the smaller 4.7 inch iPhone 8 in each color. So first up, we just have some plastic to remove from the box, which they make very easy to remove. And then we can go ahead and lift up the lid. On the top of each one is a packet, and inside we'll find a much more colorful quick start guide. We also have that very familiar SIM ejection tool and a set of white Apple stickers on a clear sheet. So getting to the phones, each one is wrapped in plastic. And the first thing I noticed right away is how much heavier they feel compared to the last generation iPhone 7. But that all glass design definitely feels quite a bit different than the anodized aluminum we've been used to for many years. When it comes to the accessories in the bottom of the box, a pretty familiar story. We have a five watt power adapter. So this is not a fast charger, which this phone is capable of. So you have to buy that separately. We also have a set of wired ear pods. So you won't find AirPods included with the iPhone 8 or the iPhone 10. Also included is a lightning adapter if you want to use your own headphones. And lastly, we have a USB 2.0 lightning cable. Next up, let's get to the bigger iPhone 8s. Basically the same experience, just scaled up to size. We have some plastic surrounding the box, which comes off very easily. We can pop the lid. And the first thing we see again, isn't the phone, but the paperwork. Everything included in the packet is identical to the iPhone 8, just scale up to size. Even the stickers are the same size as the ones in the iPhone 8, but the clear sheet they're on is just bigger to fill the box. And moving on to the phones, once again, they are noticeably heavier than the iPhone 7 Plus, and that's especially noticeable with a phone this large. And lastly, we have all of the same accessories as the iPhone 8, just spaced out more for the bigger box. Ultimately, the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus look a lot like an iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, but the phone has been completely redesigned for a glass back panel, which finally enables wireless charging for the first time on an iPhone. The frame of the iPhone 8 is still 7000 series aluminum with an anodized finish, but it's been strengthened internally, so it's still as strong as the all metal chassis from the previous design. Both versions of the iPhone 8 are one to two tenths of a millimeter bigger than the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, but it's so minor that cases should not be affected by this. Actually, the biggest perceptible difference is the weight. The iPhone 8 is 10 grams heavier while the 8 Plus is 14 grams heavier, and you do notice it. Perhaps the only color that's ever been consistent on the iPhone is silver. So of course we have a silver iPhone 8. Now the back panel is sort of matched to the silver frame as well. So it's a bit darker than the white on the front bezel. The gold color is a little more interesting because it's more two-tone than the others. The others are a little more monochromatic. So the back shell on the gold is much lighter than the frame. The frame is a much more vibrant gold. Now this gold is new for Apple. It's a bit warmer than the yellow gold that we had before, but it's not as pink as the rose gold. But I really like Space Gray, but we've had a lot of phones that are called Space Gray, but the color is actually quite a bit different from phone to phone. So if you look at this Space Gray compared to Space Gray on the previous iPhones, you can see it's much darker than before, but it's still not quite as dark as the matte black from the previous iPhone 7. Personally, matte black was still my favorite color, so I'm kind of disappointed to lose that with the all glass design, but you can correct this with a D brand skin. In fact, they have a matte black skin that's perfect for this design. In fact, it goes right up to the aluminum frame and completely covers that glass. So not only does it give you more protection for the glass on the back of the phone, but it also hides those fingerprints and gives you a little more grip. And if you want to spice up the silver model, they also have a marble skin that's a perfect match. And if you guys want to pick up one of these or check out some of the other styles, I'll leave that linked in the description below. The buttons along the side are in the exact same location. We have our separated volume controls along with our mute switch toward the top. And along the right side, we have a sleep-wake power button. And just below that is the nano SIM tray. Incidentally, the nano SIM tray does have a water gasket around it to keep it watertight because this phone, like the iPhone 7, is also IP67 rated. Toward the bottom edge is a lightning connector. So although we did not move to USB-C, this does pick up the USB 3.1 spec, which does enable fast charging for the first time on an iPhone, although we've had this before on the iPad Pro. Unfortunately, the included five watt power adapter and USB cable 
do not support fast charging. You actually have to buy a new accessory for that. So you can buy the 29 watt power adapter from Apple, which is a USB-C power adapter, the same one that comes with the MacBook, along with a USB-C to lightning cable. So with fast charging, you should be able to charge half the battery in 30 minutes. Of course, Apple did not return the headphone jack, but we have a set of symmetrical speaker grills. However, only one side has the microphone and the other side has a speaker. But the earpiece does join the bottom speaker for a set of stereo speakers, just like the iPhone 7. And they sound even better this time. They're 25% louder with deeper bass, and it does make a difference. Just like the iPhone 7, we have a 7 megapixel FaceTime HD camera, so we don't get the true depth camera of the iPhone 10. So that means instead of Face ID, we still have Touch ID. So we have a Touch ID 2 sensor, which is surrounded by a color matching metal ring. Again, this is covered in sapphire glass, which keeps it very durable and is still a fast and reliable way of securely unlocking your phone. When it comes to setup, the first thing I notice right away is that True Tone is on by default because it has a more natural warm color that reflects the light in the room. In fact, during the setup process, you get a little demonstration of how the technology works. Now, for the most part, it's pretty subtle until you really warm up the color temperature of the light in the room. Room, which I can do thanks to my lighting system. So if I increase the color temperature, you can really see the difference when True Tone is activated. Now you can quickly disable this by going to the control center and 3D touching on the brightness slider. You have the option to turn off night mode or turn off True Tone. Another feature that's actually new with iOS 11 is Quick Start. So if you have an older iPhone, you can basically use that to log into your accounts on your new iPhone. So you can quickly transfer it just by bringing your new phone next to the old phone. Besides that, you're prompted to set up Touch ID, the Siri wake up command, as well as Apple Pay. Apple calls these Retina HD displays. So we have a 4.7 inch and 5.5 inch display, resolution of 1334 by 750 on the 4.7 inch, good for 326 PPI, while the 5.5 inch gets a full 1080p display at 401 PPI. Although this is still an LCD IPS display, it still looks fantastic. It gets up to about 625 nits of maximum brightness. It also supports the wide color space of DC IP3, just like the iPhone 7. But again, we also get True Tone, which is a new technology for the iPhone. Although the iPhone 8 comes preloaded with the standard iOS 11 default wallpaper, there is a set of wallpapers exclusive to the iPhone 8, which you can apply, and they're definitely much more vibrant. Now the size difference between the 8 and 8 Plus does change the interface just slightly. So obviously we have more screen real estate on the 8 Plus, so more stuff can fit on the screen at one time. The 8 Plus also gets a landscape mode, so you can rotate the home screen to a landscape orientation, and many of the Apple apps are specifically formatted for the widescreen orientation. Another familiar feature is reachability. So you can double tap the home button, double tap, not double press, to bring down the display into a one-handed mode. In terms of specs, there is one slight difference, and that is the iPhone 8 Plus has three gigs of RAM, while the iPhone 8 has two gigs of RAM. But they both get the same six core A11 Bionic CPU, and performance overall is really impressive. So if you take a look at the Geekbench scores, we're seeing huge gains over the previous generation. This makes it by far the most powerful processor on any smartphone today. And that CPU is doing a lot of work for AR kits, the camera ISP, and much more. Once again, the big difference between the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus is the dual camera on the back of the 8 Plus. But both of them have the same wide angle main camera, a 12 megapixel sensor, which is all new. Both of these sensors are larger for improved sensitivity, and we also have deeper pixels for better noise isolation. So we're less likely to see distortion, especially in low light. But the 8 Plus adds another 12 megapixel sensor with a telephoto lens with an f2.8 aperture. So this is a technology we're pretty familiar with from the iPhone 7 Plus, and for the most part, it's the same camera system, just with an improved sensor. Unfortunately, the telephoto camera did not pick up stabilization like the main camera. Unfortunately, if you want that, you're gonna have to go for the iPhone 10. But ultimately, electronic stabilization is still very effective. One of the other features of the iPhone 8 Plus camera is the depth effect, which applies a artificial blurred background to a subject. But the iPhone 8 Plus goes a step further with lighting effects. So we have several lighting effects we can apply, which are designed to replicate studio lighting. Sometimes those effects are pretty subtle depending on the lighting condition the photograph is shot in. Now you can apply these live or you can apply them after the photo has already been taken. One of the most dramatic effects is stage light mono, which is designed to sort of cut you out of the frame and apply a black 
black background, but it's not entirely effective. So sometimes it sort of cuts out the wrong edges. Now, because we have the dual camera set up on the A+, we also have access to some of the most powerful aspects of AR kit. So this is augmented reality, and this is being applied in some amazing ways. One of my favorite demos is the Sky Guide app. So this is using the power of the Bionic CPU, along with the dual camera setup and all of the sensors built into the phone to keep track of the orientation of the phone, movement, and the depth of everything around you. So in real time, it can apply star maps to the sky you're looking at. And it's so precise and accurate that it only overlays on the sky. So if you walk around trees, it will actually hide behind the leaves of the trees, but show up between the gaps of the leaves. It's really impressive. In terms of camera quality, I'm actually surprised by how much improvement we're seeing in terms of sharpness, exposure, and color vibrancy. One of the biggest weaknesses of iPhone compared to other cameras is just that the images didn't come out very vibrant. That really comes down to the better color filters built into the camera as well as the A11 Bionic ISP. So that makes Apple's HDR processing one of the best I've seen on any camera. So instead of washing out images to bring up exposure, the color is preserved along with the detail. In terms of low light performance, the iPhone 8 is excellent. And there is a noticeable improvement over the iPhone 7 Plus, especially in terms of sharp sharpness and color. There's a lot more color with the iPhone 8. You see more reds and greens and things generally look quite a bit more vibrant. Because this phone has an f1.8 aperture, we're getting a nice shallow focus with this camera. So even if you're not using the portrait mode, you still get a nice shallow depth of field for certain shots. So you get that nice natural blurred background without any electronic assistance. But of course, you need more distance between your subjects. When it comes to video quality, iPhone has always been one of the best cameras for video, especially for 4K. And even though we don't have optical image stabilization on the telephoto camera, electronic stabilization has been extremely effective. Another thing iPhone is really good at is continuous autofocusing, especially in video. It very accurately and quickly focuses on the subject without hunting around. And the transition is always smooth and natural and gets even better with the iPhone 8. One of the new features for this phone is 4K video recording at 60 frames per second. That's a really impressive feat for a smartphone. Now that's thanks to a new high efficiency codec, specifically H.265, which is not supported universally yet. In fact, in order to switch to 4K video recording, you have to go to camera settings. There you'll find several resolutions to pick from, such as 4K at 24 frames per second, 30 frames per second, and of course, 60 frames per second. Now, if you have the iPhone 8 Plus with a dual camera, if you record 4K at 60 frames per second, you lose access to the telephoto lens. So you can't switch between the two. Now, if you have issues with compatibility as I have, you can switch off the high efficiency formats and go for the standard formats. Now, the high efficiency formats basically have the storage space that each photo or video requires without sacrificing quality. Slow motion has also been bumped up to 1080p at 240 frames per second for the first time. So again, that's thanks to the new image signal processor built into the Bionic chip. Just like the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, the 8 and 8 Plus also have a taptic engine, which replicates a physical click of the home button, even though it's not a mechanical button anymore. It's also used for 3D touch, and there's another new feature with the iPhone 8 series, which is taptic feedback when you hit the shutter release on the camera app. I actually find that feedback to be pretty useful and it doesn't affect picture quality, but I'm not sure why it's exclusive to the iPhone 8 series. Although these phones are heavier than the previous generation, they actually have slightly smaller batteries by about 7%, but that doesn't translate into any difference in terms of overall battery life. So you should see the same as the iPhone 7. So the core differences between the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus really come down to a few things, more RAM, a bigger screen, a bigger battery for better battery life, dual cameras for augmented reality and portrait effects, as well as apps formatted for landscape view. So ultimately, the iPhone 8 really is a redesign of the iPhone 7. We have a lot of great new features, a really powerful processor, fantastic speakers, but for me, my favorite features really come down to faster wired charging, as well as the new and improved rear-facing cameras. But otherwise, I don't think there's a really compelling need to upgrade from the iPhone 7. And the iPhone 8 is a pretty safe bet, while the iPhone 10 is definitely something much more interesting. Of course, we're gonna have to wait until November to review that, so make sure you stay tuned to the channel for that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know with a like, and I'll see you again in my next video.